Arrays are a collection of objects of the same type. So in an array, we can keep a group of numbers. We can have words. We can have letters. Or we can store objects. Even other arrays can be stored inside an array. So we can have an array that has a collection of other arrays. So it's a great way to help organize a group of things that are of the same type. That's the key thing in processing is arrays have to be objects of or items of the same type. This method of using objects or classes as a way to create multiple instances of a similar thing is great unless you want to put 10, 20, 50, 100, 1,000 objects on screen, then this isn't going to work very well because that would be a lot of duplicative, hard-to-read code. So this is where we need to come up with something new. So to do that, we are going to use an array. To use an array, we have to tell processing what kind of objects I will put in that array. So I now define the class objects that are going into it. We use square bracket notation to, or square brackets to indicate that this variable object is an array. And I will then give it a name, and this will be the instance we use, faces. Now, what I can do is say faces is equal to a new, and once again, I have to designate what's going in it, and with square brackets, I say how many objects I am putting into this array. And I can do it like that. To add, well, oh, forgot my semicolon. To add objects to that array, what we can do is we access it. Now arrays, each object in that array has a position. So this array has 10 objects in it. So that means the first object is at position 0. The next object is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the 10th object has an array position of 9. So computers like to start counting with 0, not 1. So the first position object is at 0. So now if I say faces square bracket 0, is equal to a new face, I just put an object in my array. Now, if we continue in this method of accessing it just with its position information in it, we're really not any better off than we were before. But I am going to delete those now we're there and F123, delete that. Delete all this because now we're going to be doing it different. And this time I'm going to go back and let's just say three objects in the array for now because 10 would be a lot of repeated typing. So faces square bracket one will be equal to a new face. And faces square bracket two will be equal to a new face. So we're really no different than we were before. So faces, square bracket zero, and notice we counted zero, one, two, but there's three objects in the array. Dot update, faces one, Hello? dot update, faces faces two dot update to speed things along here we'll just do a little copy pasting and now after the three updates display paste paste check bounds So if we rerun this, let's see what happens this time. 
same thing. So we're able to do the same thing, but what it's not doing is it's not giving us the ability to, without getting really obnoxious on the code, to be able to have other ways to do it when we want more than a handful of objects. Loops are a method we will use to execute the same chunk of code more than one time. So there's a couple different kinds of loops. We are going to be using for loops as we work through our programs because that will work best with the structures that we are doing. So if you look up loops, there are while loops, there are for loops, for each loops. We are using a standard for loop with a counter built into it and we will see how that functions and serves our code purposes. And this is where we introduce working with a loop. So the way a loop works is we use the word for and then we're going to have our initial value and it's common that we use i to represent it. That's going to be the counter. That's going to keep track of how many times we go through this. Then we do a semicolon and then I specify the condition of how long I want it to run. And I want it to run as long as i is less than 3. In this case because 3 corresponds to how many objects are in my array. So with this for int i well, i is less than 3 semicolon and then i and we're going to increase i by 1. We can shorthand that instead of saying i is equal to i plus 1 the shorthand version in coding is i plus plus. So we need to get used to seeing that. Curly brace, return twice, close curly, up arrow once. So this is a for loop and what's going to happen I'm just going to print this out and I will just print out i. What we will see happen is down in the console area down at the bottom when I run this it should print out 0, 1, 2. And then of course the rest of the program runs. So it ran, it only printed out those three values. So what happens is i is equal to 0. We do whatever these instructions are. Then we make i, we increment it by whatever we've set. Then we check and find out, is i still less than 3? So it was 0, becomes 1. 1 is less than 3, so we can run. Then we add one more to it, it's 2. i is now equal to 2. 2 is still less than 3, we execute the code. Finish our loop. Now, we add one more to it, 2 becomes 3. 3 is not less than 3, 3 is equal to 3, so then this loop stops running. So the beauty of this is we can now take advantage of that. It gave us 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. That means what we can do would be to say faces, square bracket i, is going to be equal to new face. Just like that. Now all of this up here, oh heck, we'll be brave, hit delete, it's gone. Now we will be using that there in a moment. Well, actually, we'll just see, copy this loop here, paste it in, and now we're going to tell each of these to update. Faces I dot update, my bad. Display check balance. Now let's go get rid of all this extra stuff there. So now the code is getting much more compact. If I run it, it works. But the cool part is if I were to say, let's make this 10, and now we do have something which is the length of the array. Arrays have a built-in property. That property is their length, how many objects are in. In this case, it would be 10. So I could write the word, or type 10 here, or I can just grab that value. And the advantage of doing that is now when I run it, all 10 run, 
And if I boost it up, and now let's say it's 100. And we should see it chug a little bit more so we can see they're having issues. But all 100 are running, and yet my code did not get longer or harder to read.